Tanav, how are you doing today? I'm doing well, man. Can't complain. How about how you yourself? Ah, uh, dude, I this time, you know, the what's spring forward or whatever. I lost an hour of sleep. Felt like uh, it was seven o'clock in the morning when I woke up at like eight today, and you know, it's just had an advisor meeting to start off the day. Just, uh, just a lot of, a lot it's of a rough way to start it. <laughs> oh yeah, not not how I not how I imagine it. So Tanav, you have a clothing brand. Um, what exactly is your clothing brand? So uh, about five months ago, I started this clothing brand called A World Without Hate. And uh, basically, it was during like a time where, you know, tensions were kind of heated between and just in the United States in general. And, you know, I was kind of looking for something to like with a vision of equality. So I ended up starting this clothing brand called A World Without Hate. Oh, yeah. Like, dude, great. Uh, first of all, great idea. Equality. Uh, this society today is just something else well, yeah, yeah we'll, we'll get into it but um yeah so like you said you started five months ago that's when everything kind of uh started to arise in today's culture of you know button heads between several different factors but um so when you're starting this clothing brand did you have like any experience whatsoever in this kind of like field or I had absolutely zero experience. I honestly started it overnight and it was probably one of the best decisions I ever made. I kind of just, I watched literally one YouTube video on how to go about starting a clothing brand. And that same night I created an Instagram page, a Facebook page and ordered shirts and started reaching out to people. And, you know, it's probably one of the best decisions I've ever made. Yeah, exactly. Like you were the, you're a prime example of having an idea and just going and doing it. And like yeah. clothing brand, Design is probably the most impeding part of everything. It probably takes the longest to do in, in that sense. But other than that, like there's so many drop shipping companies and so many like custom ink that you can like put a design on a t-shirt and boom, like you can become a clothing brand, make a website, exactly. make an Instagram page. Yeah, it's it's like nothing that hard. Like, do you have a do you do you have like a website and stuff as well? I I do have a website, yeah. World of that hate.com. Yeah, no, that that's so, awesome because yeah. that's that's like a big thing in, especially with clothing brand. I feel like it's like a given to like have a website, but like people that do like Instagram advertising and, you know, Facebook advertising, they kind of delay the uh, idea or the, uh, the fixed, you know, expense of having a website just because, you know, you don't know what it's going to do exactly. Like right? you don't know exactly. if you're going to grow. You're not going to know if, you know, it's just going to go off. So how much have you really grown in the past five months? So, I'm looking at about 200 sales right now, which it started out as zero, obviously, but it, like when I, I literally had one design for a shirt at first and now I'm at about 19. So, you know, we're at around 36 college campuses, I think now. And yeah, we've grown significantly since I first start, launched the brand. You know, I, came, I started it with, I, I didn't launch it the traditional way. What most people usually do, which I found out much later, they start a lot of hype behind their brand, get a lot of Instagram followers, start doing Instagram ads, stuff like that. I kind of just started it with zero followers and just told people to start following it, started reaching out to people, asked them for their honest opinions and, you know, kind of just went from there. Well, it's funny because like, I feel like when you start your first ever, you know, company business, you go into something new, you just want to do it right away. And there's like no real thing. He's like, all right, let's do it. But I found the same thing out about a podcast. Like you need to be able to plan what you're going to do. I haven't had like a game plan for what your, whatever it is going to, going to look like. And like you were saying, like, if you probably did it all over again, there would be changes, right? Oh, there would be, there'd be a lot of changes. <laughs> yeah. But, but that's like that, that's part of it. You got to learn from what you're already doing. Exactly. But I feel like I honestly have learned a lot so far from what I've done. And I've learned a lot of things about what I do different as well. So if I ever want to do it again in the future, got the, got the advice already. Were you a, are you a business major or no? So no, I am a, I'm a data science major, which is kind of like math, statistics, and coding. But that what creating this brand made me want to pick up a minor in entrepreneurship and innovation. So that's something I'm currently seeking right now. Yeah, no, that's awesome. And like, the thing is, I, I feel like running a business, like you have, if you're having a background in data science, science and like analytical thinking, like that's awesome, especially for businesses, because if you're able to, you know, learn, if you could make a simple Excel chart, like you're light years <laughs> ahead of some people that are starting 
you know, brands. And that's like a big thing. And then on top of that, you're able to analyze your data, see what's working, see what's not. And something that I wanted to uh, ask you is, so you said you have like 19, 19 designs. Is there any ones that are really hitting? Is there any ones that are missing? Like, how is that working exactly? So just based off of like how they were selling out, um, there are some that significantly sold out a lot faster than others. And there are some that still haven't sold out yet. So based off of that, I'm kind of able to get an understanding of what inventory is like worth it and what's not worth it to get again and what I should change about it. So the one thing I noticed is um, the colors white and lavender and tan sold out like just like this. But the colors like red, it took a, a lot longer and dark blue took a lot longer. So I honestly don't know why that is, but that's just a trend I've noticed. And that's kind of helping me out and taking future merchandise out. Yeah, I was just going to say, at least you're learning from what, you know, again, scientific thinking, analytics. If this isn't working, if this takes longer, so how can I improve it? Or what, what color should I get? There's like so many different variables that go into a clothing brand, a business, whatever it may be. But at least you're learning from what you're doing. Some people are just going to throw wind into the fire and just be like, okay, like it is yeah. what it is. But um, so something else that I want to ask you is what was the like internal motivation for starting, you know, a world without hate? I know you touched on it earlier, but let's bring it back to that. So, so basically I, you know, when everything, when tension started getting heated and, you know, there's all this stuff going on over this summer, especially during COVID, I basically, I was just thinking like, like what's something that, you know, something that would just be, make the world a little bit better. And I had this, I had the, the name, A World Without Hate in my notes for two months. I didn't do anything with it. It was just sitting in my notes for two months. And then one day I was like, you know what, maybe, maybe it's time to actually do something with this. So about two months later, I kind of just got the idea to start the actual brand and I went about, went and launched it. So, Yeah. Not a lot. And just like, I, I like, I just like the, you know, instantaneous, like I, I, everyone has those, you know, note ideas in their, in their iPhone. At least I hope everyone does, you know, random things that come to mind that like might be a million dollar idea, you know, who know, who knows what a world without hate is going to look like two weeks from now, to be honest, <laughs> like, you don't know what's exactly. going to happen exactly, but at least you started something. And something else that I want to bring up is the world is a very interesting place right now especially with social media everyone can have their opinion on things which they should have a, everyone should have an opinion on thing but we live in this very divided society oh, as guys. of right now yeah how do you feel about that um honestly i feel like life was a lot simpler when everyone was kind of unified if i'm being honest like seeing all these people just be divided and so polarized and have all these views against like so strong against other groups of people is just kind of, I don't know. It just makes me kind of upset. It's one of the main reasons that I wanted to go about starting this clothing brand. And I, 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 I agree with you though, because I think that, you know, COVID did a lot of things and I think it gave a lot of people this way too much time in their head to overthink mm -hmm. things, but that's Definitely a topic for the another. fire a little bit. Oh couple, yeah. A hundred, a hundred percent. But I think the problem with, you know, obviously, no, not everyone's going to get along. The, we don't live in a utopia. We're all individual human beings. No one's ever going to have, you know, this, not everyone's going to get along. Do I think that there should be change? A hundred percent. I think that there are still remnants of, you know, some early cults that are now in today's society that were of still in large part a factor 60 years ago. And I think the only thing that's really going to, you know, fade that out is these, you know, learning about it in school. I feel like we didn't learn anything about black history in high school, middle school. Like it was kind of a topic that was just brushed over. Like there were slaves, like, Oh, what happened to them? Like, what was the revolt? Like the, there's these like several factors that go into it that I think add into what, you know, these people are thinking. That is that is very true. I definitely think that they should have covered stuff like that a little bit better in high school. And I do think that that honestly might have changed the outcome of how the events that this summer kind of went. So maybe that's something that'll be kind of fixed in the future, because it seems like a lot of people do have a pretty strong opinion on that and are pushing for that in schools. So hopefully that happens. 
Yeah, no. And I think like you were saying, like in the future, I think by the time, you know, maybe, maybe out of our lifetime, but maybe near the end of our lifetime that things will change because everyone like, you know, they fade out. The people that are on one side are going to start to fade out whether or not, you know, their kids have the same opinions. Most people are now developing their own opinions. Their parents aren't uh, ruling. That's I'm putting that in air quotes because I think that's uh, it's not the right word. But anyway, ruling what, you know, your kids think and religion, whatever it may be. There's several different things that go into that. But I think like as time goes on, that that trend will start to fade out just like, you know, slavery did. There's like many, you know, many conversations with many people saying that, you know, Abraham Lincoln did it. And, you know, it was over this period of time that many people, you know, stopped slavery, they stopped buying slaves and whatever, whatnot. But at the end of the day, it started to fade out. It wasn't like snap your fingers, you know, let's abolish slavery. Like it it wasn't like that, whether, you know, the history textbooks like to put it like that or not. That's not what actually happened. Like, come on, you're you're kidding. It's going to it's going to take a lot of time, a lot of effort, but. I'm hoping that one day it'll come true. So So what would your plan be, you know, a world without hate? What would you try and do to make the world a better place in the sense of empathy and, you know, unification? So the values behind my brand are kind of like everyone should be treated equal. There's going to be people, obviously, with different benefits and different advantages that other people don't have. But the one thing that everyone should keep in mind is, you know, we're all humans. We're all here for one reason only. Life is short. Like, there's no reason to have, like, strong opinions against someone for someone, something as basic as, like, like a skin color or, like, a, like a socioeconomic benefit or something like that. So, you know, that's kind of, like, the one thing that I was kind of hoping that, like, my values of the brand kind of emphasize, you know, so... No, I, to- I totally understand. And I like, the, like, I like the values behind the brand because I think empathy is something that's very hard to understand these days, especially because everyone has so much going on it, between school, between, you know, all these, you know, things with COVID, whatever it may be, their work, nine to five, just so busy that they're not able to understand putting themselves in someone else's shoes which is something that has been lost in today's society. If you have the ability to, you know, understand, yeah, like you were saying, like if you understood that other person's perspective, maybe you aren't going to completely agree with everything that they stand for, which I don't think you should, but at least you have a better sense and a better formed opinion. I I think I've said this on every single podcast, the yin yang factor. If you can understand the yin and the yang, you're going to be able to make a more informed judgment on said opinion topic whatever it may be and i think that's what more people in society need to strive to do that is exactly correct i just think that people should be able to put themselves in other people's shoes and just kind of get a feel for what someone is going through before they make any judgments or have any harsh opinions so you know that's kind of just the one thing that a world without hate means to me specifically and the values behind the brand itself so let's transition into, so your brand. So I don't want to like go too much into, you know, the numbers aspect, but I saw that something on your Instagram page that you make donations as well. Correct. What is yeah. that going towards? So 25% of all profits go towards the charity heart to heart international and heart to heart international is kind of like a, it's kind of like red cross. It's basically it's, it's a charity that like strengthens communities through improving health access, providing humanitarian development and administering like crisis relief worldwide when, you know, there's kind of like issues in the world, for example, like Hurricane Sandy or something like Heart to Heart International is all over that or just natural disasters or stuff like that in general, where people don't necessarily have the same socioeconomic benefits can kind of lean upon to have them, you know, get help a little bit. So, so far I've raised about four hundred twenty five dollars i want to say towards the brand i mean towards uh the charity so yeah it's only going up from there yeah i mean it's not like you're gonna you know lose money on donations right i mean it's what it is what it is but um what i think is really interesting is that you incorporated that factor in it because i think these gen z companies like i mean we're generation z whether you like it or not we're part of generation z and the thing is, a lot of people are more driven to buy something 
in our generation if there is some kind of backing factor to that, whether that be it's sustainable, if it's, you know, help it like your company, you know, I make donations to this uh, charity or whatever it may be that now you have a, another factor on, all right, a world without hate, like, you know, what's meaning behind the brand. But I also have this as well, which is another deciding factor when someone's making your purchase. Was that something that was going through your head when you started it? Or was it kind of like, I actually want to do something good, but not thinking of it as a business in a business sense. I honestly thought about it in kind of both aspects. So on the business side of things, I was like, you know, like, I feel like donating a, a portion of the profits, not too many brands out there do that necessarily. So I feel like that would be kind of like a, like a driving point towards like kind of just building some credibility for the brand in the first place. So people know that the, like their money is going somewhere good. But on the other hand, I kind of picked this charity specifically because they've done a lot in the past to help people out and they're like a pretty reputable charity. So that's kind of like the main reason I picked that one. Well, I think it's very interesting because 25% is a lot to think of like off the top of your head. And that's, you know, whether you like it or not, that's a lot. That's a big percentage of your, of your pro it's of your profits. Correct. Is the 25%. Yeah. Okay. So, but you, you said, I thought about it as a business sense and the other way around. And that was a really good way of thinking about, about it because all right, 25%. That's a lot of that's, I know now I'm sitting with 75% of the profits, you know, what can I do with this? But I'm sure that at the end of the day, that's not how you think of it. It's in the back of your head, like yeah. everyone else, you know, money is, whether you like it or not, money is a very important deciding factor in human beings, whether, whether you like it or not, it's always in the back of your head. You're always worried about that, you know, dollar amount in your bank account, dollar amount in your pocket. There's many psychological studies that go into that, but that's a story for another day. The thing is that you said, you know, let's, you know, who cares? It creates credibility for my company. At in the end of the day, I'm in full circle. This is where I'm trying to go with it. Where do you see your brand going with this credibility? Like, what are what are the plans for the future? I know, like I say, that you you can't plan two weeks ahead of whatever you're doing. You never know what's going to get thrown at you. But let's think of like, what are you shooting for with a world without hate? My next goal so far, I've, I've already sold apparel to a lot of like college students at Penn State, obviously. And I said like people, I think it's 36 other schools like Auburn, West Virginia, Coastal Carolina, UT Austin, UC Davis. But my next goal right now is to try to get the clothing brand into stores. So I've, I've talked to some, like I've joined like a few like different groups online where it's like different people who've started their own clothing brands. So you can kind of network with them, get advice go like how to go about just necessarily building the brand itself and I talked to a few of them on how to go about necessarily like like getting your clothing brand into the stores so I have a few I have a few I have a little bit of a plan I'd say but that's my next goal with the brand why why do you want to go into retail stores if you're doing so well on it's just i feel like i'm on shark tank right now you know why would you want to go in the retail stores when you know the online is doing so well is there any reasoning behind that or just kind of you know well, it's more to for the brand i think i think necessarily it's just kind of the next step in creating a clothing brand i'd say because you know and like anyone can sell stuff to their friends to different college students but like if you get it in a retail store where they're covering the actual sales itself, I feel like that would kind of just be the best case scenario because then you wouldn't, you could put your time towards something else necessarily other than working constantly on the sales like I'm kind of doing right now. I think that's a very good way of thinking about it. To be honest, like I, I don't know what I was expecting as an answer there because, you know, <laughs> I've, I've talked to one other clothing brand like Jerpa Jeans. There, it's a whole different realm of possibilities there. More of a, you know, I don't want to call your product not unique, but it is, it's t-shirts. It's like that. It's not, you know, Sherpa lined hoodies or no, whatever. No, no. What they, they make so Sherpa when, I, when I first kind of started the clothing brand, the first thing I actually did was uh, reach out to the founder of Jerpa Jeans and kind of get some advice on how to go about starting the clothing brand itself. And I'm honestly glad I did because he gave me some pretty solid advice that really, it took me pretty far with creating my own clothing brand. So well, yeah, that's what you, I mean, what, whatever you're doing, there is always going to be someone better than you at 
whatever you do, baseball, basketball, making a clothing brand, but you have to, you know, have that motivation to shoot that email, which is something that, you know, not a lot of people want to do, you know, the shoot my, the shoot my shot mentality is just, eh, like people want to do something, but then like when it comes to, you know, putting their hands on a keyboard and, you know, typing away, they don't want to do it. But you had the ability to say, like, you know, what's the worst thing that happens? He, you know, he ignores my text or whatever. Yeah, yeah, like, and that's it. At the end of the day, like, are you going to cry about it? Absolutely not. Like, it's one person in my entire life that, you know, said no to my idea. But also something that I want to ask you about is, would you, you know, this is a very futuristic question, but would this be something that you want to do the rest of your life? Or is this just something that, you know, I'm in college, like this seems fun. Like, why not? 100%. I would definitely want to do it for the rest of my life. Obviously, you know, I'm a, I'm a data science major, as I said before. So it's not going to be my number one priority. I'm not going to be like my, I'm not going to be like an entire entrepreneur. Obviously studies come first. I'm here to get an education for data science. So it's definitely going to be something that I'm doing on this side for a very, very long time, hopefully, depending on how the brand goes itself. But I, like, as I said before, my next, my next goal is to get it into retail stores. So from then on, if that happens, then, you know, I'm kind of set, I'd say. Well, what I like what you were saying is that, you know, I am here to learn data science. Like if this works great, if it doesn't, like I learned so much from like just being my own boss being like this entrepreneur. And I think that's something that in entrepreneurship culture that I think is total and utter BS is that you need to put all your eggs in the one basket. No, you don't. That's the dumbest thing that I ever heard. Take all your money, put it in your clothing brand, put it in, uh, put it in, you know, ads, whatever it may be. It's just not how it works. If that say, you know, God knows if your manufacturer just said, we don't have any shirts whatsoever no more shirts like they close down then you're like i don't know what to do now i have a backup plan you know i'm a data science major what if your business goes under i can find a job somewhere and that's what i think that's interesting in today's culture is that entrepreneurship culture is like let me throw everything in the one basket and if you're not you're not that motivated and i think that i don't think that's true you're obviously a smart kid to have so that, that's why i'm saying this to you because you know you understand that this is not the end all be all and it shouldn't be whatever it is that, and now you have a backup plan, which I don't know what you consider a, your backup plan, you know, the clothing brand or, you know, the data science, you know, or it's just something like it's, it's probably more fun to do than anything else. It's just they're, using they're your mind going, in a different way. They're kind of going hand in hand right now. I'd say, you know, like I'm kind of treating them as kind of equal at the moment, but yeah, it is honestly running this clothing brand has been a lot of fun also kind of stressful but you know i've learned a lot and it's definitely been for the best but uh one one of my favorite parts about it kind of is uh as i mentioned before i'm a data science major so i know how to like code and stuff um so the most people like start like a website on like shopify or something like that but i kind of reached out to some of my friends and gave them internships to help me build the website itself from the base using HTML, CSS, and Python. So they were kind of, they were like, we had meetings, like especially during uh, quarantine, we had meetings probably like twice a week where we'd kind of just share our progress. They would learn a lot and they had something to put on their resume when they didn't necessarily have like a software engineering internship yet. So wow. I think that's one of the cool things about it. Yeah, I was just gonna say, cause like, uh- I know that like, you know, I tried learning coding for about two days and I said, I can't do this because I wanted to make my website like that for the RoninBellShow.com. Go buy my merch. But um, anyway, um, you know, I didn't know what to exactly do. Like that is so long and tedious of coding that it honestly blew my mind. It just gave me a headache and I was like, I'm done with this. I went on Wix and was like, hey, let me just put some <laughs> other things around. But that's really interesting that you were able to um, give other students an opportunity in the realm of, you know, doing what they're learning to do rather, of actually applying what they're learning. I'm sure you were the same way. Like, I'm sure that you have done more than enough coding and, you know, you're <laughs> what, you're a sophomore, correct? Yeah, two years at yeah, Penn State. And that you're able to, you know, apply what you're actually learning, which 
I think that is something that's very important. You can read all the books that you want, but that will not make you smarter unless you actually go and apply what you do. It's the same thing like running a clothing, like we'll take the example, running a clothing brand. You can watch 50,000 YouTube videos and learn how to exactly do do it and make a million dollars. Well, that's just not how it works. That's in a utopia and it won't happen. But now that you're thrown into it, you learn so much more than, like you said, you watch one 15 minute YouTube video and, you know, snap your fingers, you know, we made a clothing brand. Why not? But I'm sure that that 15 minute YouTube video did not nearly teach you as much as that of what you have learned from actually doing what you're doing. Oh yeah. 100%. The YouTube video basically just talked about like Instagram advertising and like how to reach out to manufacturers and stuff. And I was just like, you know, I didn't really learn too much from this. I may as well just kind of just dive right in and see what happens. I literally, I made like the Instagram page, Facebook page, all that at like 2 a.m. on like a random like Wednesday night. Texted all my friends. It was like, yeah, I'm starting a clothing brand. It would be really cool if you could kind of help me out here. And like, obviously they kind of, they did come through and it really helped me out in getting like a solid base for it because they would model for the clothing brand, obviously. So yeah, the YouTube video definitely didn't teach me anything. It was kind of just more diving in necessarily. So uh, like you were saying, yeah, like you were saying, you know, you have models, you, you know, you're trying to get in the retail stores. Have you thought of doing some kind of like ambassador program or whatever, or just trying to get influencers, like sending them free merch? Have you ever thought about that? Yeah, yeah. So I have done that in the past a little bit necessarily, but it's kind of hard to at least in my experience, it was kind of hard to reach out to influencers and have them actually get a response, like the influencers that I was actually looking at. Like I could get smaller like TikTok influencers with like 20,000 followers or something, but they don't get too much engagement or else I could get, you know, like reach out to someone who's actually like famous on Instagram or TikTok or something, but then I wouldn't get a response. So I wasn't having too much luck there, but on the other side of things, I kind of, um, I had like friends at other schools like U Pitt and just like freshmen here at Penn State who would kind of who I had kind of just sell clothing for me and then they would get like a commission of the profits. So I guess they would be like sales representatives technically. Yeah, no, that's a really interesting idea because now it gives, you know, the percentage of the profits. Like I was saying earlier, money always in the back of your mind, no matter who you are. And it's interesting that you said, because that gives people motivation to sell straight up. Like I, if I'm getting a percentage of my profit, whether it be a dollar or $5, like I want to sell these because I want to make money myself, especially as a college kid. It's hard to make money. It's hard to get a job with all your classes and balancing 15 other things and juggling them up in the air. And then whatever it may be, you're in clubs who end all be all. It's interesting to see that aspect of it because you said it was hard for me getting influencers and these big named people to get behind to, I shouldn't say get behind because I think you have a really good, uh, you know, mission statement and value towards your brain because brand, because I don't think it's, I don't think it's that it's just because they probably get 50,000 of those every day yeah. at the end of it. Like, let's be honest. They're probably have 50,000 clothing brands saying like, Hey, like, I'll send you free merch, if, you know, put, post a picture. <laughs> and that's okay. Like, I mean, how many people do you think you've honestly reached out to? Probably like 30 to 40. So I kind of got, I honestly did kind of get deterred from doing it just because I wasn't getting any responses. But I looked, looked into a few things like online, like there are different websites where you can, that'll actually match you with influencers. So I'm kind of still in the process of doing that. But then again, instead of just sending them free merch, you also have to give them like, a hundred bucks so that's you know it's kind yeah, of like there's a, a price to pay situation. yeah yeah exactly. there's a price it's, to pay you got to do but you know i'm still kind of learning and hopefully i will see some results from that yeah i mean it's, hey the only thing you can do is try and reach out like you like we were saying earlier they say no what it's whatever at the end of the day like not gonna you know sit in your room mope around and get depressed on that like it's you know brush it off your shoulder probably goes in your one ear comes out the other and that's pretty much exactly. it exactly so um that's very true you know before we wrap this up i like to ask every single one of my guests to have what is one piece of wisdom that you want to pass on to the listeners out there one piece of wisdom it would probably be don't be afraid to get out of your comfort zone necessarily. When I when I first started this clothing brand, if I just 
if I was kind of like a reserved person or just didn't do anything with it, I would not have seen the success that I would have had by reaching out to a lot of people that I know and having them kind of hype up the clothing brand themselves or just me reaching out to other people in general to like, you know, like I, 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 shoot, I shoot like a lot of random DMs to people about like my clothing brand just to kind of spread awareness or something like that. But like my number one thing is like you, you got to get out of your comfort zone to make things possible. Don't be scared to get uncomfortable. Do what you want to do. Not everything's going to go the way you want. Adapt and move. That's how we do it. Take a pivot if you exactly. have to, but make sure that you get uncomfortable. Guys, that's it for another episode of the Ronan Bell Show. Sanav, thank you so much for coming on today, man. Um, Is there anything that you want to plug before we go on with our day? Uh, no, it should be it, man. I had a great time talking to you today. Of course, brother. A world without hate on Instagram, H8, not H-A-T-E. I made that mistake earlier. Um, <laughs> world without hate. Go check them out. Uh, what's your website? A world without hate, too? A world without hate.com. Go check it out. Sanav's a great guy. Guy's going to have very successful, you know, future, whatever he does, you know, data science, clothing, brand, whatever it be. Great kid, man. Keep doing what you're doing. It'll all work out in the end. Guys, I hope you have a good rest of your day. Getting through whatever you're getting through. And as always, I'll just keep on keeping on. See you later, Adam. Great.